Can we do it? Can we do it? Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Why am I always rushing projects and looking for fast ways to do things? Why am I sacrificing quality for speed so often? It's because I, like a lot of hobbyists and gamers, leave things to the last minute, right before crunch time, right before you need it for a game uh, to start getting things together. You know, the night before you're gonna do a game, you think, oh, I need this. Even with best intentions of planning ahead, I often find myself at the last minute scrambling to make things or get things ready. We played our first session of Cyberpunk Red uh, just the other day on the weekend, and the night before, I sourced, printed, primed, and painted some of like a dozen minis for the game, including player characters. Now, I didn't get them all painted. I got some of them painted, but I got them printed. I got them based. I got them zenithal primed so they're usable. I sourced and printed and glued a bunch of maps and did this all the night before, even though I had weeks to prepare. Because that's just how life goes sometimes. Now it's Monday morning. I'm thinking about this mentality of doing things last minute and like what you can actually achieve. I've worked with one page rules a few times in the past and the main thing I've really championed them for, they provide a way to make an army for skirmish games and war games very quickly. Whatever game you might play, whether it's OPR or you're using these as proxies for some other games, you can get them cheap, you can print them out at home and you know have an army really fast. But that's what I've said. I've never actually put that to the test. Like let's say tomorrow, I was gonna play a game, you know, a smaller game, not a huge one, uh, with a buddy and I needed an army. I wanna see what can I get printed, primed and painted in one day to play a game tomorrow. A huge limitation is gonna be what I can get printed. So I think I have to limit myself to one single build plate on my Mono X. So I'm limited to this uh, build plate here. I've dropped in a couple of the newer models they got, these like crazy snake creature things, and I'm gonna fill up the rest of the build plate with whatever I can. What's nice is that they provide their files in individual parts so you can assemble them yourself, but if you don't like doing that and you're in a hurry like I am, uh, they also have combined files and they have them supported as well. And if you're in a rush, that's gonna be the best way to go. All right, I think I need some of these warriors. Yeah, these are gonna be a bit smaller. Let's see what I can fit here. We can squeeze a bunch in here. I'm noticing that one of these models has a spear that projects a lot higher than anything else, which means this whole print job is gonna be slowed down by all of these layers. The nice thing about resin printing is it doesn't matter how much stuff you have on the bed, uh, the, the time is gonna be the same, but extra layer heights uh, will make things slower. So I'm gonna get rid of that model just cause we're on a time crunch here and that's gonna make more room for these ones and probably shave some good time off my print. The worry is that some of these are gonna fail. And you know what, since using my Mono X, I've had plenty of failures. I do have some worry about the stuff in the middle because one of the problems I've been having with printing lately is failures in the center of the uh, print bed. Now this is a big plate on this printer, so there's a lot of suction and friction. Oftentimes things can get stuck to the FEP, but my buddy Luke has helped me out troubleshooting it. And I think I've concluded that it's because my lift speed was too fast. So I'm gonna print this with slower lift speed so it gives it time to pull away and hopefully nothing sticks, but it is gonna make this take longer. If I was gonna play a little skirmish game, that should be enough. So I'm gonna print this with Elegoo ABS like gray. Uh, 2.5 exposure time I found is pretty good. Uh, 55 seconds for bottom exposure time to make sure they adhere good, six layers of that. My bottom lift distance is gonna be eight. I used to have it set to like six, but I think that was one of the other reasons things were sometimes sticking to my FEP is it wasn't pulling far enough away and giving the FEP enough room to stretch and pop off. And my lift speed is gonna be 90, which is 
not that slow. Luke recommended to me doing stuff at like 40, but you know, prints take all friggin' day. If I was setting it overnight, I would slow that down even more. I was getting problems at 180, so 90 I found has been okay for models like this. Gonna hope for the best here. Let's slice that and save it. Call it one day army save. I haven't even started printing yet and I've already run into my first big setback. I hit save on the file in Chitu Box, walked over here, set up this camera, walked back and it had completely frozen. And I hadn't saved the actual Chitu Box project, which meant I had to reboot the program and set up that file all over again. I got it on here, but it means that what I'm printing might be slightly different than what I just showed you uh, getting set up. So I might have made some different decisions in models and placement. Still a full bed of these robots. So we're gonna go print. Boom, 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 boom. OPR one day army print. Let's see what it says here. Four and a half hours basically. So yeah, that's not gonna leave me much time for priming and painting. Uh, it, it might end up being an all nighter. We'll see. Looks like I got some support failures, but we'll see. Hopefully they're minor and only on a couple. Well, it might be mostly okay. I definitely lost two dudes though. Thing with 3D printing, it's not foolproof. There is a lot of trial and error. Yeah, we got some fails. Two guys missing, completely off their supports. This is why you don't uh, print when you need things right away. All right, hot water. And I really hope that uh, some of these are usable. I mean, overall, they look pretty good. See, this is the thing. You know, they provide such beautiful pre-supports that they just come off like butter and it's great. But that does mean that there is the possibility for failure. You know, the easier the supports are to remove, the weaker they also are during the print. So it's kind of a balance and it's on the user to find the right settings to make it work. Looks like he turned out just fine. I wanna make it really clear though that these failures, they are not the fault of the model supplier. It all comes down to me and my settings. I don't have my settings dialed in perfectly. So that's what turned out successful. Two partial failures with uh, small errors that really mattered and two that just didn't make it at all. Such is life when you're 3D printing. These will not get wasted though. They're gonna go in my sci-fi bits box and I'm gonna use them for kit bashing later. Now this is why you realistically don't wanna rely on printing if you don't have time to troubleshoot and redo a print. Thankfully, I have some more of the new sniper models that I had printed out previously, and we're just gonna go on the assumption that most people wouldn't print in the same day, or you know that they would have some time to reprint and troubleshoot. Whatever, we're just gonna go with this.
I'm definitely priming these on sticks and worrying about bases later because this is going to let me back paint them a lot faster. And I'm going to use spray primer because it dries faster than airbrush primer and time is of the essence here. So while I'm outside spray priming these, uh, let's talk about today's sponsor, the guys who made these models. One page rules are the reason that this little challenge can even happen. They offer a ton of home printable models in a few core themes that keep growing and growing in size so that you can add to whatever armies you're playing. They fit perfectly within their own approachable rule set that simplifies wargaming into one page of easily digestible rules, a perfect starting point for introducing new players and for casual gamers. Of course, these models are not limited to being used in that game. You can use them as proxies in whatever wargame or screen skirmish game you happen to play. You can even use them for role playing. A few of the armies are perfectly themed for D&D and fantasy settings, while others would be right at home in a sci-fi RPG. In a time when official models from gaming giants are absurdly expensive and often artificially in short supply, One Page Rules puts the power back in the hands of the hobbyists allowing us to print off an infinite number of models at our own leisure for you, your friends, and your family to enjoy. I really think they're a fantastic solution, and I'll put a link to their Patreon in the video description so you can go check them out for yourself and get your hands on these models. I need to make a decision about color. The obvious choice is like a gunmetal or a chrome. I know that would be good. I know it will work fast but it's kind of the generic go-to. I'm, I'm tempted to do something weird like yellow or red or baby blue or I don't know, but I don't think this is the time to experiment. I gotta paint like 14 models and I only have a very short amount of time to do it. Hmm. Yeah, let's take the easy way out. How do I add a little bit of extra flair to these in the shortest amount of time possible? The day is getting long, it's like five o'clock. Still gotta finish painting these and base them. Black contrast paint to do some of the cabling and some of the spaces between the larger panels. I'd like to use this yellow contrast somewhere or green. I don't know, we'll see. I think I'm just gonna throw a bit of contrast paint on these. Hope that's enough. Well, it looks like I accidentally grimdarked these. <laughs> it was not my intention. I am who I am and I like what I like, but I do want them to stand out a little bit more. So I think I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a dry brushing of metallic so they don't look so greeny brown. It's amazing to me that just this morning, all of this was just liquid resin. Now there's actual things I can play a game with. I put them on some GW bases because I had them. You definitely don't need to. You could also print the matching bases that go with these models. I wanna decorate the bases. I wanna actually totally finish them off, but I'm not doing anything that needs paint or drying. So I need 
very special basing material that kicks butt in this sort of situation. Thanks, Luke. You're the best. I did it. I got it done in one day from nothing to a fully painted army. Albeit a very small army, I know. But still, the idea that I could this morning have nothing and today I have this without leaving my house to buy anything is incredible to me. You want to play a game, just get her done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it inspiring to and, and motivating. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments section below. If you want to grab some tools and supplies for your own hobby needs and support the channel in the process, you can do so by doing your shopping on blackmagiccraft.ca. But there's an even better way you can support this channel and help me keep making these videos, and that's by supporting it on Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it for this one, everyone. See you again next video. Cheers.